Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm getting ready to head up north for the Northern Swing. We've got one tournament up where I consider to be real north, and uh, that is going to be the St. Lawrence River in a couple weeks here. Really excited about that one because St. Lawrence River, if you guys haven't been there, you've got to plan a trip there. Um, we're going out of, of Waddington, but all those areas from Messina all the way down to, you know, the, the, the mouth of the, the, the lake there are just so phenomenal, full of, of big, giant, smallmouth bass, but also really hungry, largemouth. But really, the focus is the smallmouth. That's what wins tournaments out there. And so I'm really, really excited. And as I'm putting together all of my, my rod and reel combos and everything, I started to realize I'm really basic when it comes to my smallmouth fishing. And if you really look at the, um, the, the type of techniques that tend to win tournaments year in and year out, uh, I'm talking about smallmouth tournaments up north, they're really just very few techniques that are really knocking it out of the park. Uh, so I can, I can actually, it's kind of a relief because when I go up north, I can really limit the amount of tackle that I bring. I really essentially have a lot of, of one technique. Like I'll, I'll rig up a bunch of rods with a, with one technique and just vary it a little bit, whether that's the, the weight of the rig or, or the, the type of, of soft plastic or elastic, the elastic that I'm using, um, you know, there, so even though I'll still have a bunch of rods rigged up for this event, usually they're just kind of duplicates of the same uh, technique. So what I wanted to do today was kind of walk you guys through uh, my core smallmouth arsenal when I'm going up north and the type of baits that I really love to throw every single year. And if I just focus on these, I think there are four, yeah, four different uh, techniques I'm gonna find a way to at least cash a check uh, with these these uh, four baits here. So uh, the very first one is not gonna surprise anybody as far as you know uh, how effective this technique has always been for smallmouth, and that is a good old drop shot rig. So this right here is a good traditional drop shot. You've got a uh, the drop shot weight. Um, I actually generally like the cylinder type uh, drop shot weights, especially since we're going to the St. Lawrence. We're going to be dragging with heavy current. So I'm probably going to switch this to a cylindrical style that snags less. Um, but then you've got a six pound uh, uh, monofilament here, or monofilament, fluorocarbon here. This is, uh, this is gold label fluorocarbon from, from uh, Seaguar, six pound. And then you've got a nose hook weight. This is the DSR 132 from Hayabusa. And then you've got a very compact uh, bait fish profile drop shot bait, which is very, very much what uh, is the most popular style bait up in uh, the Northern Lakes. This right here is the Trick Shots from Z-Man. Uh, this is in the uh, Green Pumpkin Gobi color. And, uh, and yeah, for some reason, and I think it's just because of the, the pre prevalence of gobies in, in these fisheries, uh, this is the profile that really, really, um, you know, tends to knock it out of the park for smallmouth. You don't see like as much of the like longer style baits, like, like the Z-Man long shots or rober worms. You don't see those style uh, really playing a big role. You're talking about these these short, somewhat wider bodied for for the length, um, and uh, and just kind of compact little uh, uh, drop shot baits. Those are the the keys. But you know, it, it's a funny thing because I've always disliked fishing a drop shot. But but the the line on that statement is when I go up north. When I go up north, I love throwing the drop shot because it's almost like a power fishing tactic with light line uh, for, for fishing for the smallmouth. It's really not a finesse deal. A lot of times I'm going to be using a drop shot weight that's it's it's pretty much always above you know a quarter ounce on a lot of these fisheries because you're either fishing deep water or heavy current or both uh so like 
it's not uncommon to see me throw in even a three quarter ounce drop shot weight in very, very deep water and heavy current. Um, and that allows me to, to really uh, maintain bottom contact and things like that. So it's really not a super finesse presentation. The only thing finesse about it is the fact that it's on light line. Otherwise, you know, you're you're casting it out there, you're letting it drag with the current, or you're 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 uh, you know uh, drifting with the current. It's it really isn't just sitting there and just slowly working it, you know, in an area. It's actually you're you're moving quite a bit, so it can be a lot of fun. But the drop shot is the number one tactic. If I was going to go up and fish a tournament and I only had to pick one technique, 110% it would be the drop shot for smallmouth up north. Uh, so that is the first one that I really like to throw. Um, the next one is the other finesse presentation, but it is again, another one that, that you can, you can be as finessey or as, as, as uh, you know, uh, power fishing esque as you want. And that is with the Ned Rig. Uh, the Ned Rig, going to be fishing it on very similar tackle to my drop shot. Maybe a little bit heavier line because you're making constant contact with the bottom um, with your line where the where the line tide is. Uh, so I'll be you know probably beefing up from six with my drop shot to eight and ten pound test in a lot of cases, depending on how much zebra muscle uh, uh, you, you know you might have in a lake. Um, but, uh, the Ned rig is a really, really good one. I like fishing it on, you know, harder bottom areas, maybe like rock piles, things like that. It's more like, it's less of a, a drift bait type thing where you're drifting a large area. It's more of a, a specific cast type of presentation. So I'm casting to a specific brush pot or, a, a, a rock pile, a specific boulder, or if I'm seeing individual fish on my forward facing sonar, that's when I'm going to cast this little individual Ned rig to those fish. You know, several years ago, I, I learned the, the, the effectiveness of a Ned rig for these northern smallmouth when I was fishing on Lake St. Clair. Um, it, Lake St. Clair, sorry. I've still got a cold, so I, some of my words are not coming out right, but. Uh, we were fishing Lake St. Clair. I was, it was actually a Lake Erie tournament out of Sandusky or, uh, yeah, Sandusky, Ohio. And I was driving all the way up to St. Clair and I was just targeting individual fish that I'd see on my forward facing sonar with this sucker right here and just absolutely crushing it. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to do with the, the Ned rig, and I always use just the traditional finesse TRD, um, you know, that's, that's kind of my go-to and I really do like using the, just the traditional, um, finesse head or, uh, the, um, finesse shrooms jig head. That is, <clears throat> that is my absolute favorite. I really like the light wire. We're using light line anyways. I feel like I get a better hooking percentage in deeper water. <clears throat> I feel like it, it flexes with the fish a little bit and keeps them pegged even when they're jumping a little bit better. Uh, I'm not going to say that, that the, uh, the, you know, it's a phenomenal landing percentage. If those fish are just skyrocketing right after you hook them with a Ned rig, because the heavier the Ned rig head, um, the, the better chance that if a small mouth jumps, they're going to throw it out. But these smaller sizes, you know, one tenth below and below, um, those tend to stay pegged pretty good. But I do like the, the finesse shrooms jig head the best for my smallmouth fishing in general. But that's another one, <clears throat> again, a little bit different. You know, if I'm drifting or covering large areas, uh, the, uh, the drop shot is kind of where I go to. Uh, but if I'm casting to specific fish or specific type of structure, um, I'm going to be using the Ned rig a little bit more. Uh, but let's talk about some fast moving baits because that's one of the beautiful thing about smallmouth is that they uh, are super aggressive. They're almost like if a smallmouth, and if you've ever fished for for uh, a peacock bass before, if a peacock bass in a in a large mouth had a baby. That's what a smallmouth kind of reminds me of is a, just a supercharged. Uh, you know, aggressive fish that is very opportunistic. It eats about everything, 
but it, it like when it hits something, it hits it like a freight train. And uh, there's certain baits that bring out that a very aggressive tendency out of these fish. And one of them is is something that I don't see a lot of people throwing that much for smallmouth anymore because most people are throwing the spinning rods with the finesse tactics. But a good old spinner bait is a really really killer way to catch um catch a lot of big smallmouth and they absolutely crush these baits so the the crazy thing about smallmouth fishing up north is is smallmouth love the brightest most gaudy colors now this is this right here this is the spot remover color uh, color uh in the z mang sling blades and uh and this one right here is a little bit more of a sub subdued like chartreuse it's more transparent things like that but like actually my favorite colors and i got them all packed right now really just white and chartreuse the brightest most gaudy uh you know spinnerbait you can find i like to use uh double willow pretty much 100 percent of the time for my smallmouth up north so I'm using fairly um, modest size blades. The, the blades that actually come on the sling blades um, are, are kind of what I stick with uh, as far as the size goes. But what I'll do is instead of having the shiny blades, a lot of times I'll swap those out for a white, one white and one chartreuse blade. Um, and uh, so painted blades because they it, make, it makes it even brighter. And those smallmouth love that bright, um, you know, gaudy coloration. And, uh, and so they, they absolutely crush it. So one of the keys to fishing a spinnerbait uh, for smallmouth is speed. Um, I like keeping this bait on the surface, reeling it as fast as I can to where, it, you know, the blades are still under the water. So I'm not really, you know, having to, to slow down because the blades are, are uh, you know, creating too much lift. So that's why I use the smaller um, willow leaf blades, but I also use a three quarter ounce uh, spinner bait a lot. Uh, three quarter ounce, you can cast it a long distance, but but the weight, the extra weight's gonna allow you to really burn that thing back in without having uh, it, the blades, you know, pop through the surface and, and uh, then you have to slow down and everything. So I like using a no less than half ounce usually, but three quarter ounce is kind of my, my go-to. And this is just a great way to cover a ton of water, especially if you've got a shallow flat with, you know, occasional random uh, rock piles, things like that. Maybe you got some grass. Uh, spinnerbait is a really good choice to uh, catch some fish and they'll come out of deeper water to attack that bait too. So don't be afraid to fish it around, you know, 10 or 12 foot of water, even if that bait is right on the surface, because those fish will just smash it from that, that deeper water. Uh, the other bait that, that I love throwing for smallmouth, this is actually a bait that, that last year at Champlain uh, really helped me out with a couple really key bites. It, in fact, I had, I had one uh, school of fish. It was on this like rocky outcrop. It was like this this little rocky spot out in the middle of nowhere on this flat, and uh, and there was this giant school of smallmouth on it. I mean, it, it well, it wasn't a giant school of smallmouth, but it was a school of giant smallmouth is the better way to put it. Uh, they were every single one of the fish in this school were over four pounds. It was incredible. Like when you put live scope on them, you could tell, oh my gosh, these are a different class of fish. And dude, I tried everything. They would not eat a, a Ned rig. They would not eat a drop shot. They would not eat a, uh, um, you know, a spy bait. I fished all different types of baits through these fish and it was in about 12 or 14 foot of water. But I started casting a walking bait. This this exact walking bait. This is a uh, Yozuri 3BD uh, or a 3DB. You know, I, I don't know exactly which model this is, but uh, I I really like this one because it had a little bit of shine to it. I like the the uh, transfer system on it, and uh, I also like the noise that it made. And it also has a very consistent walking action. And I threw that baby out there. And you would not believe it was like those fish that had ignored all these other things that they should have eaten. It's like a light switch went off and they went straight to the surface. And I ended up catching, you know, like a four, four and a half each day fishing this bait over top of them when they wouldn't eat anything else. And you watch other guys go through there and not catch them either. So, 
Um, this is a, a bait that, that really in the last 10 years, I really discovered for smallmouth up north. Uh, you know, I, I always ran into the, the <clears throat> I, I just never thought about throwing a walking bait for the smallmouth up there. But then I started hearing more and more about guys <clears throat> just absolutely crushing them on a walking bait. And so I started getting into that and I realized quickly, it is a great way to catch some big fish. Uh, you know, especially if you have large flats, again, the same kind of scenarios that I would throw the spinner bait, I will definitely throw the walking bait as well. And it's a great way to just catch, catch some, uh, you know, better uh, quality fish in general. So uh, walking bait is another one, uh, but th those are the, the four uh, really baits and techniques that, that I really tend to lean on with my smallmouth fishing. Um, and, you know, honestly, uh, there's like probably three or four others that I really like to throw as well. But in general, if I'm going to a northern smallmouth fishery, these are the, the rods that I'm going to have on the deck first thing, first things that I'll rig. And uh, they tend to always produce. I'm not saying that, that each one of these baits will always, always produce. Like the topwater bait is not always going to work. But one of these four baits is going to win pretty much any tournament it has the capability of winning any tournament up north at any time so um the, anyways i just figured i'd share these these uh, four different techniques that i love for my smallmouth fishing uh, but let me know in the comments below are there any other baits that you would add to this that you have supreme confidence in i would love to hear your opinions uh, on what your favorite smallmouth baits are. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, drop a comment if you have any questions. Trust the process. I'm going to see you out on the water. Take care.